So uh, let's send speaker. And uh, let me just introduce next speaker. Just a second. Uh, okay. Let's wait one more minute. And then we are going to start. Okay, so our last speaker of today's session uh, is Jio Kuang Shi, and he will talk about PDE based models in machine learning. And uh, his, he, he got his PhD in applied mathematics from Tsinghua University in 2008, was postdoc at Caltech. Uh, and uh, since 2018, he has been associate professor at Yao Mathematical Science Center, Tsinghua University. Uh, his research interests focus on nonlinear and non-stationary data analysis, singularity problem in fluid mechanics, numerical analysis, and computation of immersed boundary methods, uh, nonlinear wave phenomena uh, is in periodic media, and so on. His publications appears in Applied in Computational Harmonic Analysis, Journal of Computational Physics, and Lances in Mathematics, his review A, E, etc. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Shi. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I also want to thank the organizer for uh, organizing so, such a great uh, workshop and uh, giving me the opportunity to present uh, our work. Uh, I'm Zhou Qiangshi from Tsinghua University. Today, I will talk about uh, some PD-based models in machine learning. Uh, yesterday, uh, Professor Er has shown that uh, uh, there is a, a strong connection between deep learning and the PDEs. Uh, today, I also I will also present several more PD-based models in machine learning, some of them inspired by Professor Earth's uh, work, some of them are also related to uh, uh, deep learning. Okay, uh, this picture uh, just a uh, uh, sketch uh, uh, the overall idea of our approach. First, many kinds of uh, data can be uh, include uh, images, signals, uh, documents, and so on can be transformed to uh, point cloud in high dimensional space. Here, the uh, D is a dimension of the uh, uh, Euclidean space. The D may be very high. And uh, in so high dimensional space, no matter how many data you have, there is no way to fill in the whole space. So people, usually people believe that this data actually lie in a, a low dimensional manifold. Which uh, this low dimensional manifold is, embe is embedded in this high dimensional space. And uh, uh, in many machine learning programs, we are uh, actually trying to find some functions defined on this manifold. But this manifold, we do not have this as a closed form of this manifold. What we have is uh, just a bunch of unstructured points, uh, unstructured sample points of this manifold. And how to get these functions? Uh, over this manifold, our idea is using uh, PDEs as a tool to get these functions, uh, which means that we want to find uh, some PDEs such that just the solution of this PDE is just uh, the functions we want to uh, we want to have. And uh, to implement this idea, we are facing two problems. First, uh, how to get that PDE because we have an infinite number of PDEs, different kind of PDEs. Maybe not every PDE is suitable for this, uh, for the machine learning problem. And the first we have to uh, find some proper PDEs to model this uh, uh, problem. Roughly speaking, this is a mathematical modeling problem. And the second problem is that uh, uh, after the, the, this PDE model, is, is, uh, is established, then we have to solve this PDE. But what we have now 
it's just a bunch of points, not the, 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 the closed form of this manifold. How to solve, how to discretize the PDEs over this abstract point cloud in high dimensional space is uh, um, another problem we need to uh, solve. This, uh, uh, these are two problems we, need, we are facing in uh, these PDE models. Now, uh, first, uh, let's start from uh, a simple case, uh, which is so-called semi-supervised learning uh, problem. Uh, in this problem, the point cloud is given. And what we, what we want to get is a function over this point cloud. And uh, in some points, the function is given which are labeled as uh, uh, in, in red color. And uh, we call this uh, uh, points, uh, labeled points. And uh, we want to get the, the value of function in the unlabeled points. This is uh, the, the so-called semi-supervised learning problem. And uh, if we do not have any information uh, of this function, this problem, uh, is u post actually because the value of u can the value of the function can be any value in the unlabeled points. So we have to we have to need uh, we have to impose some assumptions on the function. One simple one simplest uh, assumption is that we assume that the function is a smooth function. It's a smooth function over the manifold which has which is sampled by this uh, point cloud. And uh, then one natural idea is to look for the smoothest function over the uh, manifold to interpret the labeled point. And uh, we just use this uh, uh, the gradient, the R2 number of, of the gradient as a measurement of the uh, smoothness. Then we get this obtention problem. We want to minimize the R2 number of the gradient of U over the manifold and such that uh, the, the uh, the interpolation uh, condition is satisfied. Here, the gradient is not uh, uh, the gradient in the Euclidean space. It is a gradient over the manifold, uh, which are given by the, the sampled points. We all, we all know that this uh, optimization problem can be transferred, trans transformed to a Laplace equation uh, by taking a rational uh, approach. And uh, then we need, just need to solve this Laplacian Bertram equation over the manifold with this Dirichlet type boundary conditions. One uh, simple way to discretize this Laplacian Bertram operator over the point cloud is just a so-called uh, graph Laplacian. In the graph Laplacian, they just transfer, they just approximate the, the Laplacian Bertram operator by an integral operator. Then the uh, that a differential equation is transformed to an integral equation. Then the integral equation is discretized uh, over the point cloud by replacing the integral by uh, summations over the point cloud. Then we get a linear system. Solving this linear system will give the uh, interpolation function over the point cloud. This is just uh, the approach of the graph Laplacian. And uh, people have also proved that uh, this graph Laplacian actually converged to the Laplacian Benjamin operator in this sense as the uh, number of sample points goes to infinity. <coughs> and the, the, the support of the, the, this heat kernel goes to zero. And uh, But we find that uh, in some cases, uh, this graph Laplacian approach has some problem. Let's see a simple example first. This is just a 1D toy example. Uh, in this uh, zero to two interval, we sample uh, 5,000 points. Uh, the, and we labeled only six points. And we want to interpret this uh, six, six labeled points in this uh, um, interval. And uh, this is, is a result given by the graph Laplacian based approach. And uh, as we can see that uh, there are some discontinuities on the labeled point, which means that uh, the interpolation given by the graph Laplacian is not, a dis is not a continuous. But uh, this discontinuity is not uh, allowed in this uh, problem. If we, if we 
if you allow the discontinuous, discontinuous continuous solution, then the constant is a, 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 the optimal solution. Maybe you think this, uh, this model, uh, this example is too simple, just 1D, uh, for example. Uh, we can also construct a, a high dimensional example. Uh, for a given image, this, uh, this example is uh, constructed as following. For a given image, we can first uh, extract in patches from this image. The patch, each patch is just a small piece of this image. We fix the size of the patch. For example, we can take a patch, we can fix the size of the patch uh, to be 11 by 11. Then we get many uh, patches. And each patch can be viewed as a point in 121 dimensional space. Then we get the, the point cloud in this high dimensional space. And then, uh, we can define a function over this point cloud. Actually, that function is just this image. Uh, on each point, we, this, this, each point is corresponding to a, a, a patch. And uh, on each patch, we define the function, the value of function as the intensity of the central pixel of that patch. It's actually just this image. So this is a ground truth in this example. Uh, then we uh, just uh, uh, we, we pretend that we only know one percent of the uh, we only know the value of u on one percent uh, uh, po points, and uh, we run the graph Laplacian based uh, uh, method. We get uh, the interpolation of the function, which is shown in this image. We can see that uh, uh, there are many points. There are many points uh, seems to be uh, inconsistent with the background. Let's zoom in some area. We can zoom in some area. This is a uh, uh, original image, zooming of the original image. This is a uh, uh, sampled, uh, uh, subsampled image. And this is a recontracted image. As we can see that in the recontracted image, there are many points. Uh, which are inconsistent with the background. We can recover the background. We, we can compare these two uh, images. We can see all these inconsistent uh, points are actually labeled points, which means that the, the solution given by that method is not continuous on the, on the labeled points. Actually, this Example, the phenomena in this example is actually the same as that in the 1D uh, example. Th these two ex examples both tell us that the solution given by the graph Laplacian is not uh, continuous at the labeled points. Uh, but how to remove that discontinuities? We have a very simple idea. Uh, now let's go back to the original optimization problem, which written in this form. We can first, uh, in our previous approach, we first uh, transform this optimization problem to uh, to a Laplacian equations and solve that Laplacian equations. We can also use another approach. We can first uh, discretize this optimization problem. If we discretize this optimization problem using so-called non-local gradient, we can get this discrete discrete optimization problem. Then we can solve this discretized uh, optimization problem uh, by a linear system. Actually, that linear system is the uh, same as that derived by uh, graph Laplacian. So these two approaches are actually equivalent to each other. Now, let's rewrite this discretized, uh, discrete optimization problem we just uh, uh, split the submission over two parts. The first part is the uh, submission over the unlabeled points. Here, S denotes the labeled points, and uh, the P denotes all the uh, point cloud. And uh, the other one is uh, the other submission is over the labeled points. Um, <clears throat> because we actually showing that the solution of this optimization problem is is discontinuous, uh, is not continuous on the labeled points, which means that this term is uh, actually uh, large, is a large term. 
how comes we want to minimize our, this object, objective function and uh, this term? One term of in the objective function is uh, large. The answer is very simple because the labeled point is uh, the number of labeled points is too small. Uh, uh, recall that in our two examples, in the first examples, we totally have uh, 5,000 5, points and only, we only labeled six points. And in the second examples, we only labeled 1% of the total points. So in this object, objective function, this term, the summation over the unlabeled points actually dominate uh, this function. And uh, so this term, the summation over the labeled points is uh, sacrificed. In the, in the in this optimization. So then based on this observation, then we have a very uh, simple idea. The idea is just uh, add a, a weight in front of the uh, summation over the labeled points to balance these two terms. And uh, this weight, one natural choice of this weight is just the ratio between uh, the the, the labeled point and the unlabeled point. Then this, after uh, adding this uh, weight, we get uh, the, the new model. This model is a, can, uh, this model also can be solved by a linear system. Actually, the first line of this linear system is, uh, the, uh, is the same as the, 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 the one in the uh, graph Laplacian and uh, the second one, the second line is uh, the new one uh, in our model. Actually, this linear system is uh, easier to solve in numerical sense because what we do in this new approach is just add uh, some positive number in the uh, diagonal of the coefficient matrix. So if we use, a, uh, for example, conjugate gradient method to solve it, it converge uh, faster than the original one. Now let's see uh, some examples. This is uh, also the, the, the 1D toy example. As we can see that uh, after adding this simple weight, we can remove the discontinuities. And uh, in this two, uh, in this uh, image problem, we can also remove the discontinuities uh, in this using by using this new approach. Okay, we can also apply this method to some machine learning problem. This is a so called uh, this is a very uh, popular data set, which is called MNIST. It's just as an image of a, a hand written digit. We have 10 digits from zero to nine. And each image is uh, uh, the size of each image is 28 by 28. So each image we can view it as a point in a, actually a 28 square dimensional space. And totally we have uh, 17,000 17, images. So that, that point cloud has uh, 17,000 uh, points. This is a, a point cloud we have in this uh, data set, and uh, we want to uh, do classification. We want to uh, uh, give give the number of each image. Okay, what do we do is just uh, we label some uh, images first. We give the number of uh, we pick up some images and uh, give the number in that image, and. Uh, then for each number from zero to nine, we compute a function phi i, and the phi i equal to one. We let phi i equal to one in the images which are labeled as a digital i. And uh, we let uh, phi i equal to zero at the images which are labeled not, uh, which are not labeled as i. And, uh, on the unlabeled image, we want to, we need to compute the value of i, uh, value of phi. And after we get all these functions, we label the 
for uh, for image X, we just labeled it as uh, uh, as the I, which gives a maximum value of phi. And uh, using this, uh, uh, I want to mean, I want to uh, remark that for this in this data set, we want to give uh, we do not intend to give the state of the art result. We just want to show the, the uh, effect of that uh, uh, weight comparing with the uh, graph Laplace. So we just uh, comparing our result with the graph Laplace. The difference between our uh, approach and the graph Laplace is just that simple weight. We add a, a simple weight in this in our approach. And uh, in the first test, we just uh, randomly uh, pick pick up 1,000, uh, 100, sorry, 100 images as a labeled image. And uh, we run five uh, tests. And this is uh, uh, accuracy in five different uh, uh, tests. As we can see, after adding this uh, weight, we can get a much higher accuracy uh, comparing with the graph Laplacian is the method. We we also reduce the uh, the label rate from 100 to 50 uh, to 50, and uh, we can see uh, because of the <coughs> labeled image, the number of image is, is smaller, and the accuracy uh, also dropped. But the relative uh, uh, improvement is uh, much higher. Okay, we can also use this method to do some uh, image program. Actually, in that uh, in the previous uh, example, it, that is uh, not a real image in painting uh, method because the uh, we use the information of the original image to construct the point cloud, which means that we know the, the original image. So that is not a real image reconstruction method. However, we can uh, improve, we can modify that method uh, easily to do the real image reconstruction program. And uh, the idea is as following. First, we, uh, first we get this subsampled image. We only keep 10% uh, of the pixels of this image. And first we just fill in the missing pixels with uh, random numbers. And then we get a complete uh, image. Also, that image is very bad because the 90% 90, uh, 90 of the missing pixels are filled with uh, random numbers. However, it is uh, complete. Then we can take in extracting patches from that image. And we can run our method to uh, get a new image. And then we get we extracting patches from that new image to construct the point cloud. And then do it do this iterative, iter, iteratively until converge, we can get the re, re, uh, recovered image. This is a comparison between the graph Laplace based method and the our method. As we can see, the results given by our method is uh, uh, much better. Also, we can drop the, the, the sample rate from 10% to 5%. And also, the, uh, our result is much better than that uh, given by graph Laplacian. OK, uh, we can also do some uh, theoretical analysis to understand, to try to understand why the graph Laplacian approach has that discontinued, discontinuous issue. And uh, we use this Laplacian equation as a model uh, problem. And uh, we have a Dirichlet boundary conditions uh, in the inner boundary. And uh, if the manifold, if this manifold has outer boundary, this manifold may be closed manifold, then there is no outer boundary. If it has an outer boundary, we impose uh, Newman boundary conditions on the outer boundary. And uh, we can derive the, uh, an integral approximation to the Laplacian Bethlehem operator 
on the uh, manifold width boundary. As we can see, the first uh, line of the uh, of this integral approximation is actually same as that uh, in the graph Laplacian. If we take uh, this kernel function as a heat kernel, but in this uh, integral approximation, we also have this boundary term. Uh, because in the in the semi supervised linear problem, the boundary is a Dirichlet type, so we cannot drop this term. We cannot drop this term, but uh, we we can uh, prove that this uh, accuracy, this approximation, has a, a, a half order accuracy actually. So using that integral approximation, we can also transfer the original uh, Laplace equation to an integral equation. Comparing the, the, the integral equation in our approach and uh, in the graph Laplacian, we can see that the crucial boundary term is dropped in the graph Laplacian approach. This is uh, actually the reason why the the, the graph Laplacian approach has uh, that uh, discontinuity issue. So based on this observation, we can rigor rigorously prove that our pro our uh, after adding that weight, we can uh, <coughs> correctly deal with this boundary term. <coughs> and the solution of our approach converge to the, <coughs> uh, the solution of the Laplacian benchmark equations, continuous uh, Laplace equations. But uh, the solution of the graph Laplace may not converge to the right answer. Uh, that proof is uh, based on the um, maximum principle. Uh, the, I, due to a limitation of time, I will skip, I will skip all the uh, proof details in this talk. OK. But uh, um, if we uh, reduce the sample rate further, even further, from uh, one percent to uh, one over thousand, we can see that uh, even in our new approach, we call it a WNL. In this approach, we can also find some inconsistent uh, discontinuous point. Discontinuous point. This. Uh, can be, this is uh, also very easy to understand because let's put uh, uh, this problem to a limit. We fix the number of labeled points and uh, let the number of unlabeled points go to infinity. Then we get uh, this uh, continuous uh, problem and uh, we can prove that. Is it, it is easy to prove that when the dimension is a, uh, equal or larger than three, the solution of this problem is a trivial. It's just a constant. Why is this trivial solution? Uh, why is this, this problem, is, the solution is trivial? We can also um, understand this by from the uh, solely of embedding theorem, because in this problem, we can only have the solution as a uh, the solutions belong to W12. As we know that uh, the W12 uh, space, when the dimension is uh, high, the W12 space may not embed it into continuous function space. So this uh, sublevel of embedding uh, theorem also gave us some ideas to get a continuous interpolations. Just, uh, increase p or s to uh, make sure this condition in the Sobolev embedding theorem is satisfied. Then we can get a continuous interpolation. OK, first uh, we, can, we, can let, uh, uh, we can put p as uh, uh, infinity. Then we get uh, this optimization problem to minimize the infinity norm of gradient of u. Uh, this Solution. Uh, this uh, problem is uh, uh, it cannot be uh, solved directly, uh, as that uh, in the uh, R two minimization problem. But uh, we can also solve it uh, uh, 
by uh, by ADMM or uh, split program iteration. However, the solution of this optimization problem may not be unique. So to make the solution unique, we can get a, a small regular uh, regularized uh, regular regularity term, just as uh, the, the R2 norm of the gradient. Then we can solve also solve this problem by uh, iterations. Then another idea is just to uh, increase the regularity S. But uh, here the dimension D may be very high. To make, if we fix the, the uh, fix P equal to two, to make this condition is satisfied, we may need a very high regularities. To minimize so high order derivatives is, uh, mm, is impossible. So we just uh, add uh, the second order derivatives in our model. But uh, from the sublim embedding uh, theorem, we know that uh, to get a high order uh, regularity may help to get the continuous interpolations. So we add a second term, a second order derivative term in our model. Then we get this optimization problem. We can also, uh, when we discretize this optimization problem based on our experience in the first order uh, model, we know that <clears throat> because the second order derivative is not enough to guarantee the continuous interpolation. So in the discrete, uh, discretization of the second order term, we also add a, a weight in the discretization. The weight, this weight is same as that uh, in the first order term. Okay, using this new model, we can also uh, do some uh, machine learning program, semi supervised learning program. This is a uh, uh, result in this two uh, data set. The first uh, line is a uh, result given by graph Laplacian. The second line is given by our first order model with weight. As we can see, after adding weight, we can get a, a very big improvement. However, if we using this uh, two uh, second order, if we add the second order derivatives, into our model, we can get another boost comparing with the first order uh, model. However, the, the, this third line is a, is a model, is also the second order model, but in the discretization of the second order term, we do not add a weight. As we can see that without that weight, the the, the performance of this second order model is uh, almost the same as the first order one. So this also uh, shows that the mod that weight is very important to uh, get a better uh, solutions. Using this model, we can also do uh, this uh, image reconstruction program. Uh, our results show that uh, by considering the, the second order uh, model, the second order term, we can get a better uh, result. We can improve the result given by the first order model further. Okay. Uh, uh, let's summarize uh, this part of the talk. In this part of the talk, we just uh, use some uh, uh, Laplacian equations to model, to build uh, the mod mathematical model, and uh, then solve these um, uh, Laplacian equations or P Laplacian equations using some numerical method. Then we get the interpolations uh, over the uh, point cloud. Okay, then one natural question is that, is there any other PDs we can use to, uh, to to solve the machine learning problem? The answer is yes. Uh, this is, uh, this part is actually uh, very closely related to the Professor Earth's talk. Now let's 
look, let's start from a very popular deep neural network, which is so-called the deep residual network. This is one building block of the uh, residual network. We can uh, write the, this uh, building block as a simple formula in this way. And uh, this the residual network is uh, constructed by uh, connect these building blocks one by one to form a deep uh, with uh, uh, the deep neural network. Then <clears throat> the forward propagation of this neural network can be represented uh, by in this form. This form, this formula can be viewed as uh, and discretization of an ODE, just the simple forward OLA discretization of this, this ODE. And uh, further, this ODE is actually the characteristics of this transfer equation. So in some sense, the ResNet can be viewed as a control problem of the transfer equation. In this problem, the terminal value, the, uh, the initial value is given, and also the terminal value is given. And we want to find a, a velocity field such that the initial condition is uh, transformed, is transferred to the given terminal conditions. Uh, This is, uh, this is a one continuous model of the ResNet, which is a, a transport equation. And uh, mm, then this equation is uh, very different from the, <coughs> the previous one we used. The previous one is roughly the, the elliptic equations. And this one is uh, just a hyperbolic equations. Then, our idea is that can we combine these two different kind of equations together to get a better model? It turns out that uh, in some problem, by combining these two different kind of equations together, will give us better answer. Uh, this problem is so-called uh, adversary attack. Uh, recently, people found that uh, the deep, the deep neural network has these instabilities. After adding very small perturbations, the neural network may, uh, the output of the neural net, network may change a lot. This, this, is, a, this is a famous example. Uh, this is an image of Panda. And uh, by training a neural network, we can correctly that the neural network can correctly uh, give us the answer this image is a panda. But uh, after adding these small perturbations, this is an image after adding the small perturbations. There is no difference from uh, if we're using our eyes to look at the image, there's no difference. But if we input this image to the same neural network, this the, the neural network will tell us the image is a given with very high confidence, which means that the small perturbations will uh, induce higher, uh, higher very large change in the output of the neural network, which means that if we look at the neural network as a function, the function that function is not a smooth the small change of the input x may cause large change in the output. If we, uh, from the transport equation point of view, this is also very natural because we know that the transport equation uh, will not regularize the solution. In some sense, the solution of the transport, transport equation may be very rough. Not a smooth, not a smooth. But, but if we add some diffusion in these transport equations, we know that the diffusion will uh, regularize the solution and it will give us much uh, smoother solutions. 
And uh, that smooth solutions, which means that uh, the solution is uh, uh, stable to the perturbation of the input. So based on this idea, we propose this uh, uh, model based on convection diffusion equations, just to add uh, this diffusion term to the original transport equations. And, uh, but in the, to solve this convection diffusion equation is, is much more difficult. Because for the original transport equations, we can solve it uh, along the characteristics. Then that in, even in high dimensional space, we can do that also. But for this convection diffusion equations in high dimensional space, it's much difficult to solve it. Our approach is just using this uh, very famous feynman kac formula in SDE. And uh, we can, uh, this formula tell us that we can also solve the, uh, the, the, the characteristics on the, but uh, that characteristics uh, has some Brownian motions. We have to add the Brownian motions in this ODE to get this SDE. And uh, by solving this SDE and uh, uh, taking expectation, we can get the solution of this convection diffusion equations. <clears throat> Using the Feynman calculus formula, we can <clears throat> solve that convection diffusion equations in high dimensional space. And uh, we can we also demonstrate that this convection diffusion approach can improve the stability of the uh, uh, neural network and uh, the adversary, adversary uh, attack. And uh, in this uh, convection diffusion model, we just add uh, isotropic diffusions. But uh, the, the, the distribution of the data in the hard dimensional space must be isotropic. So, the other idea is that can we just uh, uh, determine the, the, the isotropic diffusion adaptive to the distribution of the uh, data points? Okay, we just uh, do some, but uh, this is very difficult because the dimension is very high. Then this isotropic diffusion the, the degree of freedom in this isotropic diffusion is very large. So it's very difficult to determine the, the, the directions of the diffusion. We do a previous, very previous test. And uh, we can see that uh, the isotropic diffusion model can, uh, in, can boost the accuracy even further based on the uh, isotropic diffusion model. And uh, uh, this slide uh, shows that we want to get uh, some um, more theoretical understanding on the PDE models. Uh, we want to, uh, roughly speaking, we want to derive the PDE models because we have an infinite number of different PDEs. If we do a test one by one, there is no way to test all PDEs. So uh, we want to find a, we want to figure out a way to help us to determine which PDE, which kind of PDE is uh, good for the machine learning problem. And uh, inspired by the skill space theory in image processing, and based on some uh, basic assumptions, we can derive that the PDE models must be this form, this, this is a second order uh, PDEs. If we, uh, if we uh, put uh, more uh, conditions on this PDE, for example, we, want, we just want to study the linear uh, PDE, then we get a, a convection diffusion equations we used in this, in this model. Okay, uh, 
I think uh, I do not have enough time to tell this part. In this part, ju we just, uh, uh, in the previous part, we just study different PD models and solve the PD models. And uh, actually, this first, uh, in this picture, the first, the, this fr uh, two steps, these two steps before the PD models are very important also. That means uh, how, how can we um, uh, transfer the data to points, point cloud? And uh, how can we integrate this point cloud to a manifold? We need to introduce a metric to integrate the, the, the point cloud to the manifold. And uh, these two steps are actually very important, also very important. Uh, in this part, uh, we just uh, introduce a de different neural network try to learn a good way to transfer, to map the data to a point cloud. Okay, uh, I think I will skip this, this part. And uh, okay, now let's make a summary. We just uh, uh, test a different kind of PDs, propose uh, uh, many different, many PD models and also develop some numerical method to solve these PD models. And also in the future, we want to uh, study more PD models. And uh, also we want to study the first two steps in this picture to study how to transform the, the data to point cloud and how to learn a metric in the point cloud to get a, a manifold. Okay, at the end, I want to thank the collaborators, my collaborators from uh, uh, Stanley Osher from uh, UCLA and uh, Bin Dong from uh, Peking University. Uh, Bao Wang is a uh, Utah University and uh, Wei Zhu from uh, uh, UMass Amherst and, uh, and uh, other uh, students. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, I will take in questions. Thank you for excellent talk. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, there's nothing in the chat, so maybe we should start with any panelists who have questions could uh, could speak up. Hi, it's a great talk. Hi. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so this. Uh, you have this uh, convection diffusion equation and you make the, your network uh, more stable. So yes. if, uh, in that case, uh, so, uh, so your, your network cannot be attacked, cannot be attacked or attacked? <laughs> uh, no, not actually, <laughs> because uh, if theoretically, if, we can, if you can solve this uh, 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 convection diffusion equations, Exactly, that must be very stable. But in this so high dimensional space, we cannot solve that uh, uh, correct, uh, exactly. You are trying this good, the good fellow that have this database, uh, how, you know, how much more robust you have than comparing with the- Ah, this is uh, the, the result given by our <laughs> method comparing to the because the original, the original uh, ResNet is very unstable. And uh, the attack, the accuracy of the ResNet can be drop, can drop to zero actually. But uh, this, this uh, actually the, 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 the neural network trained by so-called uh, adversarial training. And, uh, and uh, using, by using our, uh, using the conversion diffusion model, we can improve the, we can get a better uh, accuracy and uh, attack comparing, comparing with the, uh, the virtual training model. So you, you have the best results right now? Uh, in that, uh, in, at the time when, the, when this paper is published, it's, uh, it's the best. <laughs> but now I cannot say that. Okay, another question I have is that if you use this PDE, uh, this insight, 
you 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 mentioned about this uh, M is or maybe several ten several hundred. Uh, this is uh, or or this kind of picture. Let's say let's do a several hundred uh, like a model. Can you actually use a PDE method to increase uh, the the generalization accuracy or what? Hmm. Actually, in the previous um, PDE models, uh, has no uh, has no relation with the, uh, the, the, the oh I can, uh, I can show this the, the, the part are uh, skipped because in this I part we just I think the paper <laughs> are the two ways these people they, yeah. they they claim they can increase the generalization accuracy using this PDE method maybe but uh, we uh, I I, I uh, we we do not uh, do that kind of uh, work. You know, I ask them to explain to me. I your explanation here is kind of, is rather clear. Oh, but uh, we can we also find that uh, uh, in the experiment we can we find that after adding this diffusion term, actually we can increase also increase the 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 the, the accuracy without attack. Which means that uh, in some sense it's a uh, Increase, uh, improve the generation. So uh, if you do a several ten, what, what, what's your accuracy or several hundred? Uh, I do not. I do not remember the exact number, but we can improve by one percent, two percent. Yeah, yeah, about one percent, around the one percent. Yeah, yeah, one percent is already significant, but uh, <laughs> uh, I see. Can I ask a technical question? Okay. So in the first part of your talk, I just try to understand, maybe I missed something. When you're discussing the semi-supervised learning, yeah. right? So you have label data. So mm -hmm. this is a picture. I'm just trying to understand how do you do it on the picture, right? So the picture, probably the data is like zero, one, right? Is it true, right? probably either you're black or white. Uh, you mean in the classification problem that is a zero or one, but the but, point cluster is a, is But it's a picture, is, right? I mean, I mean, is, a va is it a value of the picture or I'm just a little bit lost here. Uh, what picture do you mean? The, yeah, this one, for instance, right? Oh, this one, yeah. Uh, it's, a non, it's a grayscale picture image, yes. not a zero, to, uh, not a two value. Oh. It's a, the value, the initial of the image okay, is okay, okay. from zero to 255. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, so now you, you have like a grayscale, right? So on yeah, yeah. each particular point. So basically you have to uh, approximate the Laplacian, right? Yeah, yeah. And you use Laplacian, basically what, if I understand you correctly, it's like, do you take sort of like K nearest neighbor between two, Yes, yes, exactly. Point. And then yeah, and yeah. then that's how you construct the graph Laplace. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. plus you have a semi-supervised learning so that yeah. the function value is equal to something, right? So the yes. function value is exactly equal to what in that case? Yes. Um, e equal to what value? So what's the Are G you, actually? You can choose the value given by the label the uh, value. But in, in this example, in this example, uh, because we construct as a ground truth that, that the function is just uh, this image. Because in this, in this example, each point is actually a small patch. Small patch. We can define, we define the uh, function over the patches. At each patch, we define the value of that function is the intensity, intensity of the central pixel of that patch. Ah, oh, so that's your actually, uh... Observation. So that's the G. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. that uh, function is actually the, this image. Okay, okay. So because uh, around each pixel, we can extract a patch. So, so do you know this work by Calder and Slapchev? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so is is there any diff? or you know because I remember he's giving a talk about these things too 
yeah, the method is different. But <laughs> uh, oh, the, okay. But they're solving the same thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem is the same. The problem yeah, they're is also same. they're also solving like I remember they give example two points. Yes. Let me supervise, and then yeah. you know regularized by uh, even P Laplacian, like what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 yes. Okay. Well, so, somehow they 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 impose in a, if you're talking about P Laplacian, you have this embedding. And in this, I remember the John the talk you're talking about. He actually imposed the the hard way. Here, uh, I think uh, you penalize it. You penalize it. The, that uh, that uh, that constraint, right? You put a very big lambda there. Hey, uh, this, because yeah, in our approach, we uh, we we do it in hard way. But, uh, in some sense, actually, we which means that we. Uh, put that uh, penalty as uh, infinity. But you also put up uh, penalization uh, in uh, in the graph Laplacian thing. No, no, no. We do not. Uh, uh, you have a lambda there. That's the main thing. You, you have a lambda, right? I think they also did that too. Uh, the is that, uh, yeah, you put this one when you have this S one. Uh, as long as you put that, you put a penalization for that so, lambda. But so, uh, even in this model, we also put this uh, harder constraint. Well, you to in this operation, well, you, 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 you make this uh, the S point term to be kind of different. You put a penalization term. Yeah, you, you impose this this hard way. But somehow uh, in the future, the later pages, uh, you know, John, the, the other, I also vaguely remember that talk. They do the P Laplace, and here you actually, in the future, you do the infinite, infinite Laplace. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, infinite Laplace. Infinite Laplace is much easier to solve. So that's a crazy uh, differential operator, and uh, you don't know where to solve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because P, uh, infinite Laplace is uh, easier to solve okay. than P Laplace. Okay, so in, in, okay, okay, so go back to your, your equation again. So yeah. I'm trying to understand here. So X and Y are the pixel value, but u of x is that patch. No, 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 no. no, no. X okay. and y are, yeah. are patches. Patches, okay. They are patches. Okay. U x and the u y are uh, pixel value. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, okay. That was, I was confused, okay. So there's a, there's a question in the chat Sorry. about whether uh, tuning the Tuning the T parameter can improve convergence or help balance discontinuity, or, or maybe you could just oh. talk a little bit about tuning T. Uh, <clears throat> because the, the T parameter is actually depends on the density of the, the, the point cloud. That T cannot be very small because it, that T is actually the size of the support of the kernel functions. If we uh, if the t is very small, that is only one or two points in this support, then the the the, the approximation of the, the integral is uh, very bad. But uh, uh, the, the the t may not be very high neither, because uh, if the, the 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 approximation from the integral to the differential equation is depend on the the t. Is depend on t. So theoretically, that is an optimal choice of t, but we do not know that the optimal choice of t. So empirically, do you how do you tune it? Like it use distance to k. Uh, we just uh, choose t such that the support of the kernel function include the uh, uh, fixed number of points. For example, twenty or thirty. That's kind of, like a, kind of like a K-nearest neighbor type. Yeah, yeah, kind of like K-nearest neighbor. Yeah. Good. And, uh, excuse me, uh, can you use a bi, uh, bi, bi harmonic or use the Laplace? Yeah, 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 yeah. Use the second approach. In this, uh, in our second order theoretical model, we just uh, solve the bi harmonic equations. How about a tri harmonic? You, 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 you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can try. We can try. 
Well, if you do infinite p, then you can do infinite uh, high order derivative. Of course, uh, all the derivative is of p is easier to increase. You can yeah. uh, you do the embedding there. If you do the embedding, uh, b p over d, d over p, but uh, you know, the, the, yeah, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can either increase p, s or increase p. Yeah. Yeah, or the increase the derivative will make it more difficult to uh, to describe. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. To to approximate the high order derivative is much more difficult. Very good. Any we approach in ten o'clock. Uh, any other short question? Well, if not, let's thank this speaker and all the speakers. This was a great session and good night, everyone. Have a good rest until tomorrow. Thank all you. Right. Good night. Good night. Thanks all for coming and nice talk. Uh, then, uh, we're good. To oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Uh, okay. It's great talk. So, uh, so, uh, the, the, uh, so this P, the inf infinite Laplace in uh, this is something you did recently, or what? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. We are trying to solve that uh, infinite Laplacian. But uh, we do not solve that infinite Laplacian, that uh, differential equations. We just uh, solve that optimization problem. You solve what? We solve that uh, optimization problem. Yeah, you solve We're not a transfer that. Uh, yeah, uh, that uh, you solve the optimization yeah. problem. And uh, you also have to do the penalization, then you do ADMM, you, you said. You, you solve yeah, 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 yeah. So you cannot solve the whole things easily. Well, ADMM is also just converge to some place. You don't really have to solve it very accurately, I suppose. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Because there's an infinite Laplacian, actually, in that ADMM approach, infinite is easier to solve than the P Laplacian. Have you considered like even kind of fractional Laplacian? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> no, 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 even like a fraction. No, no, no. I, I actually have a paper with Tyrus Berry. Okay. This is, you know, being reviewed for so long now. It's actually, basically, it's very hard to construct fraction, yeah. you know, like fra fractional Laplacian on bounded domain. I, I don't know how to do that, but I, I don't know how to do it. I don't. Know, I can show you. But at least. <laughs> <laughs> At least on, on, on like close close manifold, right? It's just basically, you know, you take your Laplacian, but you raise the power differently, right? Mm -hmm. At least on Rn. On, if, you the, if you define the uh, Laplacian fraction algorithm by spectrally. If you but, but, yeah, yeah but, but that's what I was saying. But that only works for a periodic type domain. No, no, no. What I'm Rn. trying to say is that if you do the Hilbert scale and do the spectrum, I can use a multi equivalent method to do it the spectral equivalent way. Mm. I have I always want to use my my method because I actually did this when I was a PhD student. I had this idea I could do fractional of Laplace operator or neg negative Laplace by a multi equivalent method with the equivalent. I think that's all you care anyway. But anyway, we can we can talk some other time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a great. I still find it's a hard to believe. Uh, I still I cannot imagine. You put a one percent, even point one percent, you can recover the image. No, no, uh, no, no, no. That that uh, that uh, example, that result is uh, uh, because in that example we use the information of the right, region right, image right, right. That is the, the yes. funny cup. No, you have a Laplacian that is a function yeah. of that patches. So no, no, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You use the patch manifold. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this patch manifold is also a mystery to me. It's yeah. just the, uh, one example to, to demonstrate the, the, mm. the interpolation. Yes. Yeah. So yes. in that so example, the, we see yeah, you're saying that uh, this, uh, this Laplace, the underlying Laplace is actually use the, the image, the patches. Yes. So it's a, it's a yeah. Laplace function acting on function u you know, what is the function u? It map the patches into the point, into the pixel, All right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that yeah. means is that, you know, that, that means, means it's like this. You really have all the information. Yes, that's, <laughs> exactly. yes, that's why it's like, 
It's like telling you, like, look, Jinjiao, watch this clip of movie. Okay, now tell me it's black and white, right? Now I can sleep better tonight. <laughs> I never got that message before. That's why so, I asked it. You know, I asked it all the time. But, 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 but we can do this iteratively, but, but we can also do this iteratively. Ten percent of all this assembly, and somehow you can recover the the ninety percent and make a beautiful woman still out of that response. No, this is <laughs> no, no. This is why we explain this the best tonight. I am sorry because I it always bothered me for a couple of years by now because. Uh, <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I still don't understand the the technical detail, but I can certainly see that that is conceivable at least. Yeah. No, Very good. Have, uh, yeah. Me. Yeah. So I just want to mention to George Yang that actually, you know, we what we try was actually we do regularizations of some minimization problem, and then mm -hmm. we found that if there are lots of discontinuity on the manifold, when we put like fractional Laplacian. Somehow it's just you know easier to tune the uh, k nearest neighbor as well as the epsilon in the kernels, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? Usually use the epsilon kernel, right? Use use Gaussian mm -hmm. kernel, so there's a mm -hmm. tuning, mm -hmm. right? So the tuning is actually very robust if you use fractional Laplacian. But, so, but the fractional Laplacian, in fractional Laplacian, is a, that kernel function is a global. Yes. Well, it, 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 it actually, you're right. You're right. It's actually sort of, but it depends on what type of domain, right? right. So whatever domain you have for fractional process is global, I think. Well, well what, what I'm That's trying the, to say. The fraction is the integer. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But anyway, this uh, I I, don't, I know almost nothing about fraction numbers. Forget what I said. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I see what you're saying because it's like the kernel is very very slow, right? Like yeah, that's decaying right. polynomial, right? But what I'm talking about, I think there's an equivalence of Fourier series representations of fractional Laplacian. You know, if you if you if if you are staying on the bounded domain or closed manifold or Rn. Right, so. Yeah, that, uh, uh, John, I have a, a spectrally equivalent way of uh, describing the fractional process on a bounded domain arbitrary shape. Yes. Uh, in the Fourier. Uh, yes, yes. But yes. that's a highly long trivial process from something I know before. But, uh, but uh, I always looking for somebody to, to find an application of it. And, uh, so, so yeah, so that, that's all I want to mention. But in, in any case, you know, I, I'm one of your reader of your PI, PIM paper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thank you. Good night.